I'm just a guy who loves Disney and has way too much time on his hands. If anybody from Disney is watching, please don't sue me. I'm here to rate, review, and describe all of your favorite things from the magical world of Disney. I'm File91E and welcome to my Disney News and Reviews. Hello everyone and welcome to this week's Disney News and Reviews. I'm File91E. Uh, pretty even week for me this week, guys. Uh, the Wearing the Land dance from last week was Splash Mountain. I think all of you got that. Uh, pretty easy. Nothing too hard there. Um, I still want to remind you of the giveaway that I'm doing for it's uh, the 101 Dalmatians uh, Diamond Edition. Uh, the link is below. To all the links to uh, you know enter and and everything like that. So uh, still you know going strong. We got another about th two or three weeks left on that. So uh, really cool stuff. Um, we're actually headed into February, and um, I, I was you know getting the schedule all set up and. You know, you know for the next year and uh, I wanted to do something with the restaurants and I didn't quite have any ideas the one popped into my head uh, so uh, I think February I got a good a lot of good responses on this is going to be foodie February where I want to be doing a lot of um, uh, uh, reviews on restaurants and things like that I will have a Disney on ice review um, you know just because I want to get that in there but uh, yes, I am going to uh, do all of, all the restaurants in there, including the uh, the, you know, the dessert package I got for the Fantasmic uh, uh, thing, and then the um, Carthay Circle, uh, you know, package sort of deal. So uh, that should be pretty fun. Um, yeah, so you know, just keep an eye out for that. Uh, also, I do need uh, questions for the Q, uh, you know, the Q and A that I'm doing. So, if you have any questions for me, whatever they are, I really don't care what they are. You can ask away. I'll, I'll answer them if I you know if I think they're good enough. Uh, well, not, well, you know, we're not good enough, but appropriate, I guess I should say. There will be certain things that I don't want to answer or talk about, but uh, you know, if it gets too personal. But usually, I'll answer anything, so it doesn't really matter. So. Um, that Q and A and the and the giveaway should be pretty fun because uh, if everything goes right, I will you know, it might lead to a, a, a an actual live show, uh, me doing an actual live show you know with the whole set and everything like that. So if everything goes well with that, <laughs> you know it should be a good time. So um, fingers crossed. And finally, I do need some ideas for merchandise march. Uh, a lot of you have have given your input. That's really good stuff. Um, if you have any ideas on what you would like me to talk about, you know, f you know, from the Disney parks, uh, merchandise-wise, let me know. Like, like whether it be a certain store or a certain bit of merchandise, like the autograph books or whatever, anything like that, I'll be able to talk about that. And I will be giving away, I think, three or four different things um, uh, at the end of that month. So that should be fun. I'll, I'll, I might do another live sort of something for that, but uh, I'll figure that out in the next coming weeks. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it for me this week. So, so help me out with the, you know the stuff that I asked for, the uh, you know the Q and A questions and 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 some ideas and everything. Just shoot them in the uh, the, the the comment section below. So yeah, that's well, what's going on for me this week, guys. Let's get right to the news. There's a new name for the Epcot Flower and Garden Festival's concert series. Garden Rocks, with it formerly called the Flower Power Concert Series. Um, the, uh, this year's series includes acts such as the Gin Blossoms on Vogue, uh, the Village People, and Herman's Hermits, amongst a, you know, a, a bunch of other ones. So, uh, you know, really cool stuff there. We're already getting into spring. It's hard to believe. Uh, the 2015 Epcot Flower International Flower and Garden Festival will run from Mar uh, March 4th to May 17th. So, awesome stuff there. Uh, in more festival news, the dates have, have actually been set for this year's Epcot International Food and Wine Festival, one of my favorite things. Uh, the annual event will begin this year on September 25th and run through to November 16th, so it's about the same time as this past year. Uber popular, really, really popular, and uh, so I, I would love to see, you know, actually go down there uh, you know, one time this year. I don't think I'll be able to, but uh, I always say that I want to go back to the Food and Wine Festival just because it's so awesome. 
The first phase of store openings will begin to take place over the next couple weeks at the Landing District of Disney Springs. It's, I haven't really been mentioning a lot of Disney Springs, but it's been obviously, you know, they've been building stuff there, and uh, it's the, the first phase is going to open soon. It's going to be really good. These stores include ones like Apex by the Sunglass Hut, which has sunglasses. Uh, I don't know how to pronounce this. Have I have 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 any in us? Have Havianas, 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 whatever. They sell designer flip-flops and create your own flip-flops, so that's going to be down there. The Art of Shaving store, which is uh, really cool. I, there's one up by me here in Baltimore. Really, really good stuff. They have a, you know, a, a decent supply of shaving stuff. Uh, Sanuk, which is uh, creatively inspired shoes. Chapel Hats, which is hats and headwear. Uh, Soundline, which has headphones, earbuds, speakers, that sort of thing. Uh, and Aaron McKenna's Bakery NYC, which is a gluten-free vegan bakery from the creator of Baby Cakes NYC. So, really cool stuff. Um, the, uh, uh, this area of Disney Springs is on the land vacated by the former Pleasure Island, uh, occupying the space between Portobello and the west side. So, uh, these stores are in addition to the already announced uh, restaurants for the landing, which is the Morimoto Asia and the Boathouse. Uh, more restaurants and stores were, are, out, are soon to be announced for the area, which will round out the landing district. So uh, it's not fully done yet, but a lot of the you know stores are ready to open up, and I think they will soon. So this will be the first stage of the Disney Springs opening development. Really cool. And in some rehab and refurbishment news, the Magic Kingdom's Liberty Tree Tavern Restaurant will be glo uh, closing for an extended period in the second half of 2015. Uh, the closure begins on July 6th and runs through to November 20th, reopening to guests on November 21st. Um, well, it's planned that way. Uh, there has been a great deal of speculation about the new dining experiences coming to the Adventureland area of the park, which the Liberty Tree Tavern backs into, uh, or, or backs onto. So, uh, now Disney has not made any announcement about these upcoming changes, but it should be interesting to see what could, you know, is going to be happening. So, who knows? You know, you know pretty cool stuff. And finally, the refurbishment of the Harmony Barbershop at Disney's Magic Kingdom uh, will be pushed back by two weeks. The closure will now begin on February 16th and run through to March 30th, reopening to guests on March 31st. So, yeah, that's what's been going on uh, with Disney this week. That's the news. Let's get right to the reviews. All right, guys, the first thing I want to talk to you about today is the Boudin or, or the bakery tours presented by the Boudin Bakery. Now, what these guys say the bakery tour is, it's uh, free bread plus a short film and walking tour, a diversion, go anytime, the tour is nine minutes long, two and a half stars. That's pretty, that's pretty good. Uh, this is located in the Pacific Wharf section of Disney's California Adventure. Now, the Pacific Wharf doesn't house many attractions in fact this is pretty much the main attraction uh in there aside from the Ghirardelli chocolate thing um but that's more of a restaurant sort of thing this is an actual attraction where uh you don't really get you know sit down and eat or anything like that this is something where you know that you actually can go and see um but the pacific wharf area is pretty cool it's kind of you know designed to be like the wharfs in uh you know the san francisco area because obviously there are tons of uh wharfs and um marinas uh, you know in uh, california just because it is the entire west coast pretty much um so it's a really you know great area there really fun uh you can go and get you know get some good seating for uh food and whatnot really cool stuff but being the only attraction here uh, there really isn't much else to it aside from that uh, so I just figured I'd tell you that real quick. Now this opened on February 8th of 2001 and it was an opening day attraction. This is one of the few things that has remained steady, steadily, uh, you know, over the, you know, these past years, uh, ever since uh, the, uh, the Disney's California Adventure uh, opened up. Uh, now the actual attraction itself, uh, it's hard, not really hard to describe because, uh, you know, it's, it's a bakery tour. That's what you do. You go into this uh, bakery and they show you how they make the uh, Boudin sourdough bread. Uh, when you go in, you're actually given a little sample. It's really good. Um, you know, the bread's really, really, you know, well done. It's, a, it's fresh made bread. And um, if you like sourdough bread, this is, you know, you know something to see and, and something to really appreciate. Um, now, this is hosted, actually, by Colin Mockery and Rosie O'Donnell. 
um, you should remember them. They were, you know, pretty big in 2001. Um, that's why they're there. And uh, you have an opening, which, uh, you know, before you get into the bakery area, uh, where they kind of give you the history of sourdough bread and the history of the Bodain um, uh, bakery sort of thing. You know, they tell you about how sourdough bread is... Um, uh, there is no yeast as a leavening agent, which means you know they're, they're, it's it's a type of bread that doesn't use yeast to make to make it rise. Uh, it rises on its own, uh, you know, through fermentation, which is why they you know you, that's how yeah, that's how you get the sour part of the sourdough. Um, and they go through all that to tell you about the you, the you know the mother uh, uh, loaf or the mother dough that you know has caught you know. Like every bit of dough that has come out of that bakery, has uh, ha, you know, you can trace the you know the good bacteria back to this one thing that you know this one loaf of mother dough by uh, the original Boudin that you know invented it. Anyway, I've talked too much about that stuff. They go over that with you at nauseum in the tour, uh, and then the, this nice little door opens and you go into the actual bakery itself, where you actually see all these uh, you know different people. They're not actors or anything. They're actual you know chefs and and uh, bakers and stuff making this dough. Uh, there are different stations that you that you go to. I think two of them, two different stations that you go to where you can uh, see Con and Rosie uh, talk to you about what you know what is going on at this station. You know like. You know they're making the dough now they're kneading it now they're cutting it now they're you know you know they're, they're letting it rest now go to station two and you'll see more of what's going on now they're taking it out of the resting thing they're scoring it and now they're finally letting it rest again so that it ferments up into this big loaf and then you uh you know they introduce a you know like a little chef who gives you a little bit more of, of more information and then finally they cook it and you see the finished product you know right there in front of you and uh you know it's it's really cool and then you can exit out to your left uh the, it really isn't a long walk it really isn't at all it's all one level one floor uh, but the really cool part is is you actually see them making the bread and they will interact with you They're not very stingy or anything uh, they, you know, they, they will wave to you and uh, but you know, they are working so you know, you know keep that in mind So it is pretty cool how you know you to learn how they make the bread I'm always into that. I like to learn how things are made and uh, you know to you know to know the history of it and all that stuff So it's not a total waste of time um it is pretty cool it you know they did put some effort into it it's nice to see you know all the stuff that they make there being used in the parks and uh, everything um you know is you know that is made there is used you know it's not like you know just made for show or anything like that this is an actual bakery going on and you see uh you know just what has to happen in order to make the bread now, uh, is this a major go see? No, it's not. But is it a worthless thing? Ah, it's it's not that bad. Um, you know, it, it isn't like it. You know, like they said, this is a diversion attraction, so you're not really going to you know see much here. Uh, but if you have some time and you want to go into some air conditioned areas, check this out. Uh, you, you know, you might learn something, and if you're into baking and stuff, this might actually be something you would really enjoy. I like to learn about things, so I actually did enjoy this. Uh, and plus, the free bread sample is always nice, too. Um, so that's always fun. So what am I going to give the bakery tour uh, in Disney's California Adventure? I'll give this three stars. I'll make it. It's one of those things you can go if you want, but if you don't want to, you don't really have to. Um, you know, it's just an even attraction. They actually did put some effort into it. There is a little bit of the magic in there with the magic opening door, but the real magic is actually watching the people make the bread. And, uh, I don't know, there's something about baking that just, um, is really cool. It, it, it really, it really appeals to me just because there's a lot of science going on and it's, uh, you know, just pretty crazy to see, uh, you know, everything that's going on. Uh, and I really enjoyed it. I really enjoyed that. And um, I think you all will too. So check it out the next time you're down there. Uh, it's you know it's good for kids. Um, there, although there isn't much to see, but if they're into baking and stuff like that and cooking, uh, they might actually enjoy it too. So the bakery tour presented by the Bodin or the B Bodin Bodin. I I, I, th I think it's a French thing. Uh, but you know by the Bodin Bakery, uh, I'll give that three stars. So check it out. Alright guys, now it's on to one of the more popular uh, attractions of uh, these parks here, especially all the parks around the world. 
Uh, this was a, an attraction that wasn't supposed to be as popular as it became, but it became one of the best things that Disney ever produced. And that's Buzz Lightyear's Astro Blasters or Buzz Lightyear's Space Ranger Spin, uh, depending on which coast you're on in the, uni in the United States. Now, what these guys say Buzz Lightyear's Astro Blasters is, it's a space travel interactive dark ride. Major attraction, go before 10.30 a.m. or after 6 p.m., a real winner, four stars. Now, this is located in Tomorrowland in the Disneyland Park. And um, like I said, this is one of the more popular attractions ever in the park. Uh, the lines for this can get really, really long depending on what time of day you go. We didn't wait because we went, we, you know, we, you know, we follow the directions of the book. Um, but it did get up to, you know, almost a 60 minute wait at some times. Now this is an Omnimover attraction, so it always constantly is loading, but it's very popular. Kids love it because they always want to get on and try to beat their score. Why? I'll tell you about it. I'll tell you about it in a minute. Now this opened in March of 2005, uh, a couple years after the original opened in uh, the the East Coast, uh, the Buzz Lightyear's uh, Space Ranger Spin, um, and this replaced the Circle Vision 360 uh, attraction. So uh, now there is one of these in every Magic Kingdom style park uh, in the world. There is one in Shanghai Disney, Tokyo Disney, Disneyland Hong Kong, uh, Disneyland Paris, all, all, all everywhere. There is a a you know a version of this attraction in each of the parks um there's actually even a, a version of this in disney quest over in uh, the downtown disney area or disney springs as it's known now uh there is an area where you actually control this little like go-kart tank thing and you shoot these uh compressed air balls uh at each at each tank there so uh there is an area you know like this is a very popular <laughs> attraction now if you don't know the attraction itself uh is an Omnimover attraction. Like I said, you hop into this little thing and uh, you basically just go through uh, the world of Toy Story 2 with Buzz Lightyear and Zerg and then his evil emperor Zerg, uh, Nemesis, and you uh, try to stop Zerg by shooting all of his, um, his, uh, his minions and whatnot. They all have a, a big Z on it and you have to shoot the Z with this special laser gun. Um, and you get and you rack up points and at the end you see how you know they tally up your points and, and they show you you know what you are if you're a pilot if you're like a like a newbie or a pilot hero that sort of thing uh, it's a really 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 fun attraction a lot of people love it I really like it I'm not I although I seem like to be I'm never good at these things my brother always winds up beating me even little kids wind up beating me I'm not sure if I'm shooting it right or I'm just a really bad shot but I, I or I never know what to shoot at and uh, I don't know, I'm just <laughs> really, really bad at it, I guess. Um, but what's cool is uh, all of them ha you know, feature a thing where you can actually, you, ha you, know, you like you control the spinning motion of your car that you're in, of the little uh, vehicle that you're in. Um, but what makes this different is because this was built after the original uh, Space Ranger spin at, uh, at, at Disney World. Um, they actually made the the gun thing, the your laser blaster, removable and completely handheld, so you can go up and down, left and right. The one in uh, in Disney World, it's attached to a turret thing, and you have to kind of move it. So there's an added level of difficulty there. But over in Disneyland, you actually can take uh, you know, the um, the you know sh the gun out, and you can move it around no matter what. Uh, you, you, like you're not confined to where you're. Uh, your um you know your car is turned like like say you wanted to shoot over there you have to turn your car and then shoot the thing and then you know shoot the thing like that but here in astro blasters you can you know your car can be over here but you can be shooting behind you so that's pretty cool too now after you're done if you uh, are one of the top 100 of the day you'll be featured on a leaderboard and uh, you'll see your score and all that stuff in your rank uh, then they'll even t you know take a photo of you and uh, you know, well, they take a photo of everybody, but they'll take a photo of you and have it right there. Uh, there is a point in there where they will take a photo of you as you're shooting and all that stuff. And uh, you can, uh, at the end of the ride, email it to yourself, which is pretty cool. That's really fun. Uh, now, say your score is over uh, over one million. Uh, the counter on your car can only go up to nine hundred ninety nine thousand uh, nine hundred ninety nine. Uh, but the, your actual score, if you email your photo of yourself, they will, they'll actually give you the actual score uh, uh, along with that. So uh, say you shoot over a million, a, lo a lot of people do apparently. I, I've never done that. 
um, they, you know, you will actually, uh, you know, you, you'll be able to see your score then. Uh, but other than that, it's just, it's, it's a very basic ride. You just go through and you shoot. But people love shooting gallery type things that they don't have to pay for. Frontierland shoot next position. They don't have to pay for this. They can just wait in the line, go through in an air-conditioned room, and it's nice and cool, and you get to shoot futuristic laser guns and stuff like that. And that's really fun. And they like to uh, compete with their family members and all that stuff. It's just a really, really good time. And uh, I didn't think I'd like it just because I'm not good at that stuff. But I wound up loving it. It's one of the things I usually want to get, you know, hit each and every single time. Uh, it's not a must-see for me, but... Um, I do want to hit it, you know, a, you know, a lot, and uh, all of the people that I went with, they loved it too, uh, you know, especially my brother. He he, he loves these types of rides. Um, I do actually have some video of mine and Nathan's time there. It's you know shot through my GoPro, so there is there is a little bit of a fisheye thing to it, but uh, just so you can get a good perspective of how this ride is. So uh, hopefully you will like this video and you'll understand more about what the ride's about. Uh, I'll come back later after it and uh, rate it. So enjoy the video and I'll be right back. Try this bed egg. Oh my god. We just got off a of Star Tours. Come on. I'm not even going to look at this score. I'm not going to look at this score. This is terrible.
I'm a level three. We're both level three. We're level three. Level three. I don't know what that means. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed that. Um, I know we had a good time with it. I know Nathan did. He really enjoyed it. Um, you know, it's just a, it's a very fun attraction, and it's totally worth uh, you know checking out um, because. It's just really, really, really fun. It's a lot more fun than you know. You know, people might actually give it credit for. Even if you're not into the uh, whole shooting thing, um, you get on it and you, you'll wind up getting really into it. It's, it's. I think it's the competitive nature in people that they just want to do better than their, uh, you know, their fellow patron. So, uh, uh, you know, it's just, uh, or, or or even themselves, they want to beat their own score. So that's just kind of the draw to it. You know, as childish as it is. Uh, there is uh, you know something uh, almost addictive to it, so it's uh, it's you know it's actually really funny. So what am I going to give Buzz Lightyear's Astro Blasters? I want to give this a solid four out of five stars. Uh, it's one of those attractions that you really should see or 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 experience when you're down there. If you miss it the first time, go definitely check it out the second time. Uh, it's not too different than the Space Ranger spin, aside from the fact that you can detach the guns and. You know, it, you are tethered, you know, by a, a cable, but you actually have a little bit more control so that you're not, you know, just confined to this one little area. But I think that one little bit, you know, gives it something different and it gives it a different uh, added, um, uh, you, know, te you know, technical sort of thing. You know, it makes it more difficult. Uh, you know, there's a challenge to it. So, um, you know, it's really good stuff. So... Um, I highly recommend this to everybody that goes down to Disney. Um, you know, check it out, and if you go to Disneyland, really experience this. And there is, like, you know, like I said, one of these in every other, uh, in all the Disney parks in the world. So wherever you are in the world, if you're if you're going to a Disney park, check it out. I really don't think you will be disappointed. So Buzz Lightyear's Astro Blasters at Disneyland Park, four stars. Check it out. Well, guys, hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, again, you know, post your questions for my Q&A right in the comments section. Any question will do. I'll answer all of them. Uh, and, and, and if you have any ideas for Merchandise March or anything like that, uh, just uh, let me know. And again, um, uh, the giveaway is down there too. Check out the description box for, you know, information on that. Now, if anybody from Disney is watching, please don't sue me. I don't want to get sued by you guys, because even though I don't think I'm going to, um, I'm pretty much giving you guys free advertising here. Um, I just want people to go to Disney World and or Disneyland and have a great time. You know, check out the Bakery Tour or Buzz Lightyear's Astro Blasters. Those are two really great attractions at Disneyland, the Disneyland you know area, and uh, I just you know I had a great time in them, and I think they will too. And if you are going to Disneyland or Disney World, be sure to go to allers.nettouringplans.com, www.magic.com for our latest and greatest Disney news. WaltDisneyWorld.com is good too, and so is Disneyland.com. Um, so yeah, we're. I think I have a top ten for you next week. I'm going to bring those back. Uh, you know, at, at the end of every month, pretty much, uh, just because I fell out of doing them, and now I want to bring them back just to. I don't know. I like doing them. I thought they were fun, and so I want to bring. I think I want to have a top ten uh, next uh, week, so that should be cool. So last week's "Where in the World" uh, I think was pretty easy. I tried to fool you, you know, with the whole different camera angle, but didn't fool you. I think everybody knows Flash Mountain. You know, they can just hear it. So uh, yeah, I'll try to stump you this time. So guys, "Where in the World" am I this week?
Bye, guys.